Hey everyone, so welcome back. In this tutorial we will go over the event craft part of the NM blueprint and this pretty much goes from top to bottom, so we'll start at the top. The first thing is and we check if we have actually a adventure kit character and if not just don't do anything because this NM craft just works with adventure kit characters and if we have that then we'll um, set all the variables for uh, the we save the adventure kit character, we save our movement component, and then we call sub events to update all the variables. So at first we'll update the movement variables, then speed and velocity, then everything concerning inventory, the aim offsets, uh, take care of zone and transitions, and lastly we read a few network things. Okay, so the first thing is the adventure kit movement variables and this is just the movement mode and the custom movement mode as well as the current balance. So if the character is balancing then this value changes from minus 1 which means uh, left side or to 1 which means right side and if the balance is at a certain point the character will fall off the balance beam. Next is speed and velocity. This is pretty um, straightforward. We take the velocity, get the length, uh, of the current velocity and set this to the speed variable. Then we query the max speed and set it to the max speed variable. Next uh, we check in which direction the character is moving. So this is pretty much an angle from uh, 0 to 360 degrees uh, to check um, if the character is for example running forward or backward or something like that. And in some cases we need that um, to blend uh, the movement direction. For example, when the character is holding a weapon and jogging to the left or the right because uh, he's actually moving in a different direction from uh, the camera. Uh, next we um, use the uh, velocity and convert it to local space. Um, this is used for like the wall climbing and the ledge climbing and pretty much does the same thing as shown in the previous tutorials for blending the movement um, blend space. Uh, this this here is the wall direction. Um, this was sim pretty sh similar to the direction um, for moving, but the wall uh, is kind of movement on a vertical plane and thus the angle is, con is um, calculated for this plane. So if the um, character is climbing upwards then the angle is zero and, the, and if the character is climbing down the angle is 180 degrees and similarly for climbing right, the angle would be 90 degrees, and so on. And this is plugged in into a blend space that then plays the correct animation for this direction. Uh, lastly we have the local acceleration. Um, this was similar to the velocity um, and used in a few blend spaces. Okay, this was the movement, uh, the speed and velocity stuff. Now we go over and read inventory. So first we check if the character has an inventory and if the inventory has currently an item or the character is equipped in an item. And if that is the case we'll get the type of the item so we can blend the, the holding animation and uh, if the character or if the current item is a weapon and has a charge uh, percent like the bow then this is right here. and. Yeah, that blends the, the holding animation and the charge that I've shown you in the previous tutorial. So next are the aim offsets. Similar here, we check, we just query the aim offset pitch from the character. Um, for the adventure kit this only, there's only the pitch, but you can, if you want, use all the other uh, components as well. And we check if the current item actually wants to use aim offsets or not. And lastly, and this is a bit more complicated, the zone and transitions. So um, ladder climbing works in a way that uh, when the character or when the player more likely um, wants to go up, the animation is pretty much just looped, but each step we have to reset the character to the ladder. So um, this is a this is a uh, an animate notifier that is called on the transition uh, on the animation and each time this is called this flag gets reset so the NM blueprint knows that the character has done a step and resets the movement 
um, location on the zone. And this NM notifier is called here, called zone step done. Next we update transition variables. So if um, the character has a pending transition, we set the zone change flag. And if that is the case, we'll go and update our transition variables. We do this only once until the zone change variable is false again, then we set this gate. And first we will set the transition direction and check if we actually have a transition because when doing transitions um, to zones the character can also transition to a zone without a transition component which is most likely the case when the character is for example entering a ledge. Um, the player walks up to the ledge, hits it, and the character starts entering the zone, but there's no taken transition component. Um, if the character is already in the ledge, or already using the ledge, and jumps to the right or up, then a transition component is taken. And depending on which kind of transition we have here, there's a different um, set of instructions. So first we'll take a look if there is a transition component, which means um, the character is jumping for example, from ledge to ledge, and we'll query the closest target and source position, which means uh, we'll check where on the zones the closest position is um, relative to the character, and on the source means where the transition starts, starts, and on the target means where the transition ends. And we'll subtract these locations and get the direction the character is going in and we tra inverse transform this so we have a local direction. This means in this case that the character, if the character is going, is jumping to the right, then this vector will actually indicate a right direction and not some um, world space direction which is independent from that. So we have a value that we can use. And in the case that we don't have a transition and only a zone, We'll get the closest location we can on the zone, which um, the character will be in after the transition, and we simply um, go uh, and uh, we simply take the transition, uh, the direction to that, and again inverse transform it so we have a local space. And lastly, if um, all that's done, we'll um, check where the character currently stands relative to the zone. So this can be used um, for example for the tight space where the character can start on the one end or the other end of this tight space and depending on that it will have to play different transition animations. And for that we we'll first check uh, if the character already has a zone because it could be that the character is entering the tight space, in this case it wouldn't have a zone or it's exiting a tight space, in this case it already is in a zone, which would be the tight space. Okay, depending on what is the case, we'll take the current, we'll uh, select the current zone, and in this zone we'll get the closest zone transform. This means um, the closest, so similarly to the closest location, we'll uh, query the closest um, kind of rotation on the zone. In in tight spaces, in, in regular zones, this is only ever the same orientation as the zone itself, but for splines, for example, it can be a different orientation depending on which direction the spline is looking. And then we take this transform and inverse transform the actor location, and this again gives us a local um, location, so in uh, zone space. And lastly, here are the network variables. Um, they are important because some, uh, like for example, the ladder climbing is driven by acceleration, but on remotely replicated clients there is no acceleration, but rather only velocity. So dependent on whether or not the client, or whether or not the, the character is a client or a server, um, it has to do different things. And that's for that. Okay, the next uh, thing we have are notifiers for footsteps. They call the play footstep um, method. 
And this pretty much just goes over the owning character, looks if there are any footsteps components, and plays a configured footstep. Um, then we have the direction matches, which is a helper utility method. And this is um, a kind of more sophisticated uh, way of checking if a transition is actually in a direction that we want to go in, um, which compares the current local transition direction with a given one and returns true if this is uh, inside a tr threshold or not. Then we have get next movement. This goes and takes the pending transition and checks, okay, do we have a zone? If yes, we'll query what zone physics the zone has and returns it. If we don't have a zone but we have a transition, we'll check the physics, uh, the movement mode at the end of the transition and set that. Or if we have nothing, then the movement mode won't change and we'll just return the current one. Then we have get transition in direction which is um, a test to see if there is a transition that can be taken in a given direction. So first we'll have to check if we actually have a character, because if not we can't do anything. Um, then we have to check if there's a zone, because if the character doesn't have a zone, um, he cannot transition into any direction, because there are only transitions on uh, zones. If the conditions are met, then we'll uh, constrain, we'll get the closest location on the zone, transform the given direction, and call get possible transition for this zone with the uh, given parameters. And if there is a transition, then we'll return that. If there's no transition, we'll say there wasn't anything. And get next zone. It's a simple implementation that kind of just checks if the uh, pending transition zone is valid or not and returns the zone as well as a little flag so we can check that. And that is how the event graph has been set up for the adventure kit character. So thanks for watching.